I'm open to it and maybe that's why I hear it or feel it. But what it shows me is how much he loves each of us and how much he wants to kiss and has to give consolations to each of us. And I feel that very deeply and how he answers prayers and how he loves us in such very specific ways if we let him. Welcome to Mamas in Spirit, a podcast pointing you towards God in everything you are and everything you do. I'm Lindy Wynn, and it's a blessing to be with you. It is always a blessing to be together in the Lord. Welcome everyone to this mini retreat and a podcast, this time to take pause and really retreat deeply into our own hearts, into our own beings, and open ourselves to the profound work and graces that only the Lord can do. And I am so blessed to be here with a dear sister in spirit, a sister in Christ, Christy Bentley. Christy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having having me. I'm so happy to be here in this beautiful prayer room. Lindy, I love it. I'd like to copy it and take it to my house. (laughs) You can. (laughs) Really, this is the center of my home and I did not design this home. It's a really funny, sweet, quirky home that I love because people just kind of added on here and there. And literally this prayer room is in the center of the house. And this is where I record all of my podcasts in person that are done in my home, as well as all the ones online that I do over my online studio. So I love it. And it's also because I'm inviting everybody into my home and heart. Mamas and Spirit is an outpouring of really myself and my being and my own heart. And Christy, I have experienced that so much already from you. So everybody knows Christy was one of my first friends in Franklin, Tennessee, and it was the work of the Lord because me, Brian, and our children and my father-in-law went to the neighborhood pool in the middle of a random (laughs) summer, very hot, humid summer day when we first got here and we're sitting at the table. No one else was there except for one man and some of his children. And that was Patrick Bentley. (laughs) (laughs) And he can spot a St. Benedict bracelet from a mile away. So he found you. He found you guys. Thanks to my father-in-law. He was wearing one from my St. My Hero. That's right. Oh, we're very blessed to know you too and your family and you've blessed us a lot so thank you for inviting me here well praise god and patrick called her right before i could hear him through the phone (laughs) and he said i'm just calling to pump you up and that is just so (laughs) precious and that's exactly what we want we want to be just filled and really pumped up for the lord so that we can pour out into our homes our families and the world just as god uniquely and personally calls each one of us so in that spirit and the holy spirit let us begin in prayer name of the father son holy spirit Amen. amen Come Holy Spirit, dearest Lord, thank you for being so generous to us, so good to us to bring us together as sisters and brothers in Christ to rest, remain, and abide in you. And Lord, we just pray that this time is full of you and nothing else, that we are decreased and you are increased during this time of this creation of this mini retreat and a podcast, and then also in the lives and hearts of all of us, of me and Christy here and everyone gathering with us, Lord. May you be increased. May we be so filled with you that we cannot help but to pour out your love on everyone we meet. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. So Christy, I would love for you to begin at the beginning of your story. Okay. By the hand of God, I was married on one of those 7707 wedding days. And Patrick and I, within the year, felt called by God to start a family. And so we actually went a few months and had not conceived. And so we thought maybe, maybe let's pray novena. And what better novena to pray than the novena to the infant of Prague. And so we busted that out and we started praying. And for some reason, I just did not have the same faith (laughs) that my husband had, but we were traveling when we had finished the novena. And I said, well, you know, I'm, I don't think I'm pregnant again. And he goes, well, you're in luck because I brought the pregnancy test. And so (laughs) we finished finished that novena and I took a pregnancy test that day. And sure enough, we found out we were expecting our first baby. And so it was 
It was really exciting, really, really exciting. Not too long after, just within a few weeks, I had signs of a miscarriage. And so we waited some and we thought maybe everything's okay. Patrick needed to travel. And so he left for a conference and things still seemed okay. And while he was gone, I actually, I did. I I had a miscarriage. It was, it was so, it was so hard to be without him in that moment. But I was with family, but it was, it was a hard day. I was in so much pain. I got first brought to a doctor's office because I was was staying with my parents at the time. And in that doctor's office, I had passed out from pain. An ambulance picked me up, brought me to the hospital. They took care of me. They took care of me really well there. But they had confirmed that we had lost the baby. In that moment, you think, wow, first infant of Prague, you gave me a baby and now now he's gone. And what is God's plan? What is God's plan for me? And does that mean God needed this baby as my intercessor? Yes, for sure. I felt that like complete confirmation in my heart. But then I wondered, what does this mean? And so kind of like Mary, pondering all of these things in my heart. Well, that wasn't really the end. I came home from the hospital and then I still had tons of morning sickness. They did follow up tests and I wound up needing to go in for surgery to have a DNC. And I will never forget that day I was sitting in the hospital room waiting to be brought back for surgery. I had a rosary wrapped around my my wrist and I was praying on it because I was very nervous. And this woman, this nurse woman walked into the room and she said, oh, you're Catholic. And she stuck her hand in her pocket and she pulled a rosary out and she said, this rosary was in Lourdes where there is healing. And she took it right away and she put it onto my forehead and she started praying out loud and she prayed. She said, I pray that the Lord would heal you. I pray that you would have years and years of fertility. I pray that everything goes perfectly and that you would have many babies. And then she walked out of the room (laughs) and I I cried the whole time. I'm thinking, who is this nurse? (laughs) Later, she had come back in the room and I said, who are you? She said, my name is Ella. That name means light, which I I knew. And she was a light to me that day. And we found out that she lived down the street from my parents, which was really beautiful. So I got to see her again. That day I had my surgery. I went home and started praying for another baby. And now we had this intercessor. We named him Peter Thomas. We lost him the weekend of the feast of St. Peter and Paul. And my sister-in-law, Jeannie had just had a baby and named him Paul. So we felt like, oh, we need to give that cousin a buddy and we'll name him Peter. So that's the reason that we did that. And so the healing journey began, which, you know, still continues on. And we started praying for another baby. Soon after, we found out we were expecting again. In this moment, of course, anyone who has lost a baby, you just stay nervous. You're joyful, but you just stay nervous. And will this happen again? And how will this turn out? And so unfortunately, my numbers were low. I needed to take progesterone. I had to have multiple ultrasounds. And during this pregnancy, I actually continued to have bleeding episodes. And so we thought that we might lose this baby too. We got to about 10 weeks along. And I think this was maybe the lowest, the lowest point for me. I thought I had lost the baby again. We had a night long bleeding episode. They brought me into the the ultrasound the next morning. And I just said, please just tell me, you know, is everything okay? And I was pretty down, pretty low at this point and the nurse said look and I looked up at the screen and there was a baby kicking around on the screen <laughs> and I thought what kind of miracle is this that I would have whatever happened here and she said oh you had what's called a uterine hemorrhage it has nothing to do with the baby just a tear that sometimes happens and the baby's great he's doing fine or she's doing fine. We didn't know at the time if it was a boy or a girl. And that was like a real moment of the Lord reaching down and and saying, you're a mom, you're a mom. And um, whether this baby is going to be fine or not, you're a mom. Do you see him? And I saw him. And so I decided in that moment, no more despair, that this is a life. Whether we get to keep him or not, this is a life. And you're just going to move forward in your motherhood. And you need to be hopeful. You need to stay in this space of hope. So I started to pray every day on this rosary for my baby. And I started to pray for all of these things, like what he would be like and kindness and for the virtues that he would have. And so I was praying every day for this baby because I didn't want to live.
live in that uncertainty and in that like, well, what if I do lose him? No, he's here. He's here right now. And we're just, we're just going to pray. We're just going to pray. So I did. I continued to bleed for a long time and finally it ceased and I had lots of ultrasounds and I took lots of medication and all of the things. And finally, we we started getting near the end of his pregnancy and I realized I was, that this is going to happen. I'm going to be a mom for the first time and <laughs> see this baby in person. And I realized that this rosary I had been praying on had holy water from Fatima in it. And so I decided I was going to entrust this baby to Our Lady of Fatima. And I'd already entrusted him to Our Lord and to Our Lady, but for some reason I was really inspired by the Holy Spirit to entrust him specifically to Our Lady of Fatima. And so I started asking her a lot of things. I was like, this is happening and I'm going to be a mom. I need to ask you for some things. And so as practical as they were or as lofty as they were, I I started asking like really specific things from Our Lady. And so the first thing was we lived in this little teeny tiny apartment and I was like, we don't have a nursery. We're starting to load up our living room with like a crib and all the baby things. So I marched myself up to the apartment complex office. I was very large and pregnant. And I said, excuse me, I am wondering if you would happen to have a larger apartment. We're about to have a baby and just curious what that would cost. And that lady that day sat there clickety clacking on her computer and she kept looking at me very confused (laughs) going, I'm not really sure what's happening here. And she clicked around a little more and then she looked at me again and she said, I'm not really sure what's happening. Now this was on a Monday. She said, it looks like if you can move on Thursday, I can get you a bigger master bedroom and a bigger living room and a three bedroom apartment for only seven more dollars per month. (laughs) And I said, great, I'll take it. I'll move in three days. I didn't even ask Patrick. So she pulled up the paperwork and she handed it to me. And she said, you're going to be living in apartment 513. And that is the feast of Our Lady of Fatima, May 13th. And I thought, Our Lady, you are so good. Patrick calls that a signal grace. He goes, you're really good at those signal graces. The Lord gives those to you all the time. And I'm not sure why, but it's a grace to get those like specific, detailed, the way that he loves us, like in those details. And so we moved into apartment 513 and just in three days time with a lot of friends help. And we were living there. We started setting up our nursery and I continue praying to Our Lady. And there was a day that I was at mass at St. Henry's and I saw this woman from across the way and I thought, I think I talked to her on the phone at work a lot. I'd like to introduce myself. And so I did and I walked over. Hi, I'm Christy Bentley. Nice to meet you. And she said, looks like you're about to have a baby. When are you due? I said, well, I'm due on May 19th, but this baby is going to be born on the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. He's definitely coming on the 13th. And she said, you will not believe it, but Our Lady of Fatima is at my house right now. And I said, does Our Lady of Fatima want to come to my house right now? (laughs) (laughs) So she, uh, with the Legion of Mary, they had the traveling statue of Our Lady of Fatima moving around houses. People were praying with her at the time. And she said, well, there's a really long wait list and I don't think she'll be able to make it, but I'll let you know. Give me your name and your number. So a few weeks later, I I went into labor and I went to the hospital on Mother's Day to have this baby. It was May 10th and I got there and it was a fairly smooth right until the very end and pretty stressful. I started asking Our Lady for help. The baby was stuck. We weren't quite sure what we were going to do. And it was a long stuck. It was an hour. His heart stayed okay. So we just waited and waited. But finally I delivered him and the doctor said, wow, the reason he was stuck was because his little hand was tucked under his chin, but it was because he was blocking the umbilical cord from choking him. And I watched her unwrap the umbilical cord from his neck one, two, three times. And I thought, oh my goodness, I have no idea what God's plan is for this baby, but he's okay. He blocked the umbilical cord from choking him. They took that little teeny baby and they passed him over to the nurse and she put him on the scale and the nurse yelled from across the room, five pounds, 13 ounces. And Patrick and I just looked at each other and I just started crying. I was like, that's the feast of Our Lady of Fatima. Here he is, our little our little Marian baby. And so we, we named him Gabriel and we gave him a Marian name and he was born in the month of May. And I brought him home the next day and I got a phone call from the Legion of Mary. Mary, that Our Lady of Fatima would like to come to my house. 
And so on her feast day, she was at my house during my first week of motherhood. And it was really beautiful. It was a really beautiful gift from God to me to have her there. And one of the very like vivid things I remember about that time is that, first of all, I just couldn't believe he was there. I just couldn't believe that he was so tiny. And then I sat praying to Our Lady during that first week while this massive statue was in my apartment living room, which really kind of freaked people out too. You know, they walked in, there's, she's bigger. Than, than we are. You and me, Lindy, especially because we're like five foot. Um, <laughs> she's huge. And I remember sitting there and talking to Our Lady and thanking her for her intercession and for her prayer. And I remember saying, wow, I mean, you've been here and I haven't even prayed one rosary. I wish you could stay longer. I wish you could just be here longer. And in that very moment that I was praying that, you know, when we used to have answering machines, Lindy. Yeah. (laughs) So my phone rang and I was nursing a baby, so I couldn't get up, but the answer machine went off. And as I was saying that, the answer machine picked up and the woman said, hi, Christy, this is Betty from the Legion of Mary. Just calling to let you know that so-and-so can't come pick her up today. She'd like to stay with you for another week. And I just about fell over. I was just like, what in the world? And she was just so present to me after my first loss. And then after like such a difficult time, in that first pregnancy and then just in those first weeks of bringing this baby home that I had just hoped for and longed for and it all just felt very undeserving but it gave me such a deep sense of gratitude and appreciation for what God had done. Yes, thank you so much for sharing that beautiful, beautiful story of how Our Lady of Fatima has accompanied you and helped carry you through such vulnerable moments in your life and it's so fascinating to me listening because if you don't already know those of you listening I've never been pregnant and our first two children we adopted older from foster care and I longed so deeply for a baby and have a story that is different but yet has so much to do with Mary and Mary carrying me and me clutching a miraculous medal that my girlfriend gave me from Magigoria in the middle of the night for the few weeks before our little one came so I want to dig into that Christy I want want to dig into the vulnerability that you experienced because you use the word nervous. And I know that there's a lot of depth underneath that, that nervousness. You said basically that once someone experiences that kind of loss, that you're always nervous. There's mm-hmm. always a nervousness there. Yeah. Yet you also talked about once you really invited Our Lady of Fatima into your experience and to help carry you, how you were carried in a sense in a super natural way. I'm sure you still had a lot of feels at times, Mm -hmm. but yet it sounds like that prayerfulness and that intimacy opened your heart in a way that it had not been opened before to be carried really ultimately by Christ. Yeah. Can you dig into that nervousness and just ambiguity and uncertainty in our lives? Because I'm sure you've experienced that sense in your life and just how you really opened your heart to be carried. Well, I think the nervousness comes from actually just lack of trust in God, where I was just like, you know, you're grasping on like, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose this. I don't want to, I don't want to lose this person. I don't want to lose this person. I don't want to lose this person. And it it taught me a lot about trust. And I think in a lot of ways, it actually is one of the biggest reasons we've actually had so many children <laughs> after this is because you get this sense of, first of all, that God is completely in charge. He didn't have to include us at all in the creation of a child. That's a gift. That is a complete gift. Like a lot of people just don't realize that this is something that he did not have to do, you know, and he did. And realizing like this is not not something that I deserve. It's just complete gift. And if he wants to give it, he can. And if not, and there's no reason to be nervous. I have to just trust in his plan. And so I feel like the deep gratitude that I have that he gave this first child to me, like just kind of bursted my heart open to say like, what do you want from me? And it's kind of been shocking to see what he has has given to me. Yes. And I actually, I want to dig more into that shockingly because we're from friends. And mm-hmm. you said something to me recently that I did not realize because for everyone listening, just to be really honest, <laughs> 
moving across the country to Tennessee, I have never seen so many large families. And at first, it was so beautiful, but yet also, to be very honest, difficult because, you know, we've never had one child. And God's really blessed my heart to never compare. Yeah. Like, praise God. Like, in my lifetime, I yeah. really do believe that God has uniquely molded, crafted, and shaped each one of us and that we're all uniquely called. And I knew that intimacy with God from the time I was really nine years old. So it's not a comparison thing. It has not been hard for me to go to other people's baby showers, like none of that, because I guess too, I recognize that great profound gift and blessing of every life and truly every life in every circumstance and every life from the moment conception Mm -hmm. to death, to, to natural death. I believe in that so, so deeply. Yet at the same time, your family, so many other families, these big families, I think it struck my heart like, oh, well, I, I might have done that too, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. How, can you share with everyone how many kids you have? Yeah, we have seven. Seven on earth. Mm-hmm. On earth. Yep. <laughs> yes. Seven on earth. Seven children, seven beautiful, beautiful, vibrant children on earth, a beautiful family. And so that was the first time in my life I was like, oh, maybe I would have done that too. But God's so good. You know, I just bring that to God in prayer and God is so good in healing and loving and merciful and compassionate. Yeah. Yet it struck me also, the second thing that struck me from that was realizing you come from a family of how many children? Two. Two. Yeah. You and your brother. And you said something to me when we were at a gathering together, like almost like you couldn't even believe how many children you have. And it's still <laughs> like, in a sense, like so glorious yet overwhelming to you. Like mm-hmm. you did not, this is clearly God's plan. This was not necessarily your plan or something that was familiar to you. Yeah. Yeah. Can yes. you share about that? Because I find sure. that really beautiful and fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. So I grew up in a family with, with just a brother and people ask me that, oh, you must have come from a big family. And I think one thing is that I grew up in a family. My parents are still married. I grew up at a dinner table every night. I grew up in a family life. We thrive in that. But it has been deep in my heart since I was younger. You know, people say, what would you like to be when you grow up? I mean, I would just say a mom has has been deep in my heart for a long time. But I never imagined this number. (laughs) I never imagined this number. But I mean, honestly, honestly, Lindy, when I met you and I have a handful of other friends who have had, you know, second secondary fertility or haven't ever been able to conceive. It is like one of the many reasons that my heart remains very open and remains in a state of gratitude for the gift because it is a gift. In the world we live in, it is not looked at as a gift. I mean, it is very rare. I mean, I know we do have a handful of families here, you know, that that are large and there is a Catholic community that is thriving with all these large families. But in general, it's just, it isn't seen as a gift. And I feel that as part of like the Christian walk to make that a reality, like this is a gift, you know, and it's not my plan. Oh, it's not my plan. It's his plan. And having seven kids has been shocking, especially because I'm an introvert. I'll be like, there's just so much noise. (laughs) Lord, are you sure I wasn't supposed to be religious or, you know, on my knees all day in a really quiet chapel? And he's like, no, no, because our children aren't something that we want and we get and we have for them. I feel like they're very much for our sanctity, each one of them and in how they're growing and what they need and how they are going to stretch me. And I see that very clearly. (laughs) Oh, God is trying to stretch me and trying to make me holy by how I have to serve each one of them. Yes, I appreciate your authenticity and your openness. Do you ever feel judged for having a large family? (laughs) Yeah. Can you talk about that? Sure. In general, the response that is given is like, you're crazy or glad you can do that because I couldn't. And really what I want to say back is I can't, like I can't do this. I can't. It is purely 100% the grace of God that like we get through our day with seven kids. I'm going to ask him every morning, like, Lord, I'm going to do so much wrong. I'm going to forget so much, maybe even to feed a kid a meal. Sometimes I do that. <laughs> like whatever it is, you know, it's like, oh, you didn't eat lunch today. What in the world? <laughs> but Lord, like just make up for everything that I lack here with raising these children. And he can, he absolutely can. And so 
yeah, I feel like there's judgment, but also I feel like just in the heart of women, I also feel like on the the flip side of that, there might be like a word of judgment or some sort of like snarky remark or like a, oh, I'm glad you can handle that or you're much more patient than me. But on the flip side, I think there's just a longing for motherhood in women. You know, there's just a longing and whether that's an excuse for them, maybe I'm not sure, or maybe just a curiosity of how is this done? And the answer is God. And then my second answer is a really good husband, but I'm doing better at letting it roll off because I just, especially as my children grow, I just, it's so cool. So cool to have so many different people and personalities and character, characters in the house. Like it's just There's never, never a dull moment. It's so exciting. It's just so exciting. It's vibrant. It's vibrant and it's beautiful. When you say now you can let it roll off your shoulders, that means Mm -hmm. that it did kind of hurt your heart or give you a twinge of pain before? Yeah, definitely. I've had some really hard comments like, why would you keep doing this to your body? Why? Why would you do this? Or, okay, you know, are you crazy? Or do you guys not have a television? All sorts of things. And there was this one moment actually I was so sick with baby number six I mean so sick and I just come off a really difficult interaction with probably about three people in a week one asked me what were you thinking I mean and it was a sincere what were you thinking and I was laying on the couch I kept hopping up to you know run to the restroom (laughs) to throw up you know and it was just I was so morning sick I was laying on the couch and I thought to myself what was I thinking? And in that moment, a friend who's very in touch with the Holy Spirit sent me a text message and she said, happy eve of the feast of Corpus Christi. And I was baptized in the church of Corpus Christi and my name is Christy. It's not spelled the same way, (laughs) but it's a special feast day to me. And, and I thought, oh wow, I thought that's my feast day tomorrow. Like, I think the Lord's trying to reach out to me. And I said, thank you. And she wrote me back and she said, do you know who St. Julie? Juliana of Lieges. And I wrote her back and I said, nah, let me think about that. And I said, you know what? Right after I had Juliet, my fifth, I was sitting in the back of adoration and a woman came up to me who I did not know, an older woman. And she said, what's the name of your baby? I said, her name is Juliet. And she said, oh, do you know that any name that starts with Julie is a Eucharistic name? And I said, I didn't. She said, oh, She's so special. And I thought, yeah, okay. And she started naming all these other saints that names began with Julie. And I thanked her and she left. And I texted my friend back and I said, I just had this memory that there was a woman who told me about St. Juliana of Liege and that it's a Eucharistic name. And she said, it is. And she said, have you ever read about her? And I'm like on the couch with morning sickness thinking, no, I don't think I've read about her, you know, but okay. And so I'm like Googling it on my phone as I'm laying on the couch. And I read that St. Juliana of Liege was the reason we have perpetual adoration. And while she was trying to complete this mission of getting perpetual adoration, she was so sought after and wanted to be killed that she hid in the home of St. Eve of Liege. And my daughter's names are Juliet and Evelyn. And then I read these two bonded together and they lived their life trying to increase the mission of reverence, and devout love for our blessed sacrament. And like in that moment, I literally felt like God grabbed me by the face and said, you don't know the plans that I have for your children. And I realized I had named my daughters not even knowing the names of two friends who had completed this massive mission for our Lord. And I really felt like he said, you cannot listen to all of these things. You don't know the plans I have for your kids. And I had a real turning point there. When you're asking me about letting things roll off my back, I had a real turning point there. And I thanked the Lord for that because I started coming up with really funny answers to people's comments after that. And when I got that sixth baby home on the day of his baptism, I thought to myself, I wonder who's saint's feast day is today. I just want to know what day he was baptized. And I googled it. I did not know it beforehand, but he was baptized on the feast of St. Eve of Liege. And I felt the Lord kiss me on the face when I read that. And I thought, 
Thank you, Lord. That is so beautiful (laughs) that you would give me that grace after I had felt so down and in such a place of wondering, like, what is this suffering for? And what was I thinking? He has a beautiful plan for each of our children, adopted or otherwise, and he's in charge. Yes. And you teared up at two points. One, when you talked about God grabbing your face, Mm -hmm. and then secondly, with God kissing your face. Tell me about that. I think in my motherhood, this is just a small glimpse of all of the confirmations that he has given me about the plan for my family. Because I do see like the suffering that could be with infertility. I see the suffering that could be in all different types of motherhood, you know, and for me, my pregnancies are hard. And so when he gives me these beautiful consolations, I appreciate them so much. I appreciate him just being so personal with me. And so it feels, it feels like he kisses me (laughs) I actually kind of like feel it like I feel like I felt him grab my face that day and so I think that's why I teared up because he's so good he's just so good something I was reflecting on when I was thinking about coming to talk to you today is sometimes I tell these stories I really like to tell stories (laughs) sometimes I tell these stories and people are like oh of course that would happen to you and no no I'm open to it and maybe that's why I hear it or feel it but what it shows me is how much he loves each of us and how much he wants to kiss each of us and how much he wants to give consolations to each of us. And I feel that very deeply, his love for each of us and how he answers prayers and how he loves us in such very specific ways if we let him. I love all of that so much. (laughs) You are so precious. And Christy knows, I just got back last night from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, from the Catholic Women's Conference, and really the gift and the honor of speaking to them about the Immaculate heart and that our hearts will never be immaculate like Mary's, but yet that's still the goal. The goal is to open our hearts so fully to the Lord that we can have these kinds of experiences. Like that's not how I articulated it to the woman there. That's what I'm hearing from you is that you recognize somewhere in your own heart and soul that if you're open enough or each of us are open enough that we will experience that personal kiss, that personal cheek hold (laughs) (laughs) of the Lord. Because God loves each one of us that much. And you are a very special person because I don't know how many women could sit and have a conversation with one being so fertile (laughs) and one being so infertile. That's so much of the heart because there's something that we both share so, so deeply in common that I think everyone listening shares as well. And that is the call and the example of Mary to surrender, to surrender to the unique plan that God has for each one of us in our lives and to trust in that. You talked about nervousness. We all experience nervousness, anxiety, fear, all the things about following the Lord. But yet when we choose, regardless of how we're feeling at times, to surrender and to trust and to abide and to return to the Lord, the Lord carries us like you're talking about in a supernatural way. And I I do want to tell everyone, because I know that my infertility has come up from other people's stories multiple times lately. And I want you to know that I'm very much at peace with us. God has blessed me so profoundly. And it's not that there's not, you know, a loss there to think like, oh, well, what if there were little Brian's or Lindy's, but there are little Brian's and Lindy's and they live in our home Mm -hmm. and there are children and the meaning and the purpose and the call to adoption. And it goes back to the same heart of the matter that Christy's talking about in your life. Christy is the indescribable value, meaning purpose of every human life. And there are so many children in foster care or that are vulnerable to foster Mm -hmm. care in our world that need families. And we need them because like you say, we're sanctified. I have never been as sanctified as through my marriage and raising my children. And I imagine that any of us who are married or have children can probably say the same because it's in the intimacy, just like in our relationship with Christ. It's all about the intimacy and that personal call. And I love, love, love. And I've never heard someone say this before because usually people talk about the call like what's the call that God has on my life but to talk about like you don't know what call and what purpose 
that God has for all of your children. Mm -hmm. That is so beautiful. That is so incredibly beautiful. Yeah. It's great to dream for them and dream with them about what he might do with them if they let him. So that's one of my favorite things to do. What do you think God's going to ask you? What do you think he's <laughs> going to ask you to do? This is exciting. Let's talk about your gifts. What What is he going to do with your gifts? It's going to be so exciting. I can't wait to see. <laughs> I tell them that all the time. And they're like, mom. <laughs> You see, that is so <laughs> precious. <laughs> Thanks. That is so precious. I cannot thank you enough for sharing your story. And Christine and I talked like I do with everyone before we start. And we don't have a plan. I mean, that's kind of at the heart of this too. This is a heartfelt conversation. And we pray for just the Holy Spirit to take over and to be what God wants it to be. We offer ourselves, our hearts, and then allow it to be. So I had no idea when you started to share this story and really about the loss of life that you first experienced, that it would really touch on the profound value of life and your openness to God's plan for life, even when it's been overwhelming or unexpected or all the things, but yet how you've opened your heart so fully to the Lord for the Lord to give you the kiss of faith, the kiss of trust, the kiss of goodness, the kiss of generosity, and ultimately the kiss of love, of his holy love. So I want to just thank God and praise God for that. Chrissy, is there anything else you really want people listening to know? Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> You don't have to. <laughs> Good question. As I was thinking about our Blessed Mother today, before I came here, one thing came to mind, which is I spent a lot of time with consecrated women, kind of in high school and college, and they did a lot of teaching us to pray. My parents taught me to pray. We prayed every night, but the consecrated taught me, before you go to bed, go to Our Lady, like a statue or even just in your heart, and just dump everything on her like you would to your mom. And I was thinking about that today because... Well, now I have a daughter who wants to just talk my ear off like all the time, especially at bedtime. It's like, it's about to be bedtime. Let me just tell you everything, mom. And I have a very clear memory of doing this to my own mother. You know, I know everyone didn't necessarily have that, but oh man, my poor mom. I'm sure she was so <laughs> tired and I would just talk, 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 everything. You just unload it so then you could rest. And so I love that. It's like a tradition. It's like a spiritual tradition in a lot of religious orders that right before bed, even after night prayer, you would just go to Our Lady and they would just kind of lay everything out before her and say, here it is. Everything on my heart. It's everything I'm worried about. This is everything. Could you fix this? Could you do this? You know, and then you can rest. And so I just was going to offer that suggestion for people who maybe like already have this relationship with Mary or who don't or who want something new to some sort of new thing in their relationship with her just in the evening just throw it all at her and she's got it just like our humanly mothers kind of take care of everything while we sleep that is beautiful and I've never heard that before and I was not raised Catholic so I don't know all the things anyway not that any of us know all the things that is so incredibly glorious thank you so much for sharing that and would you like to close us in prayer Sure. Lord, thank you today for letting me be here with my friend, with Lindy. Thank you for her beautiful ministry and podcast that help people see you and experience you and know you. Thank you for all of our children. Thank you for our husbands. Thank you for all of the gifts that you've given us. And then I'm going to close with my favorite prayer that I pray every day. Thanks be to thee, my Lord Jesus Christ for all the blessings you have given to me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I love that so much. And the word dearly is so perfect coming out of your mouth because you are so dear. <laughs> Thanks, Lindy. Thank you so much, Christy. Thanks you for having me. You are a me. blessing. It is an honor to have you. And thank you everyone else for being here and you can go to mamas and spirit or wherever you listen to podcasts to hear more stories of the heart stories of souls here on earth who are just loving the lord with all of themselves and doing the very best job that they can to really surrender their hearts and lives so god can do the things that only god can do know you can always reach out to me if i can help you with something if i can pray for something for you please do not be shy and our chaplain father john meyer he gets all prayer requests as well so that he can hold everyone in prayer too. Can't wait to be together again next time. This is Lindy Wynn with Mamas in Spirit. May God bless you and yours always.